The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, and we're looking. Oh, let me, let me just mention. I always, we're always looking ahead here because there's programming, but that nine to ten hour with uh, Tommy O'Brien Jr. That's really something worth listening to. A lot of fundamentals put together with technicals. Uh, many of us here don't talk very much about the fundamentals, and he does. And it's really nice to hear because uh, when you put your, your, your smorgasbord of all ideas and technical stuff together, it's really good to have the thematic, the, the theme of the trend. So um, I, I recommend you try to get yourself together to be able to listen to the nine o'clock and then all, all the way through to four o'clock this afternoon we've got programming so let's just get this underway look you can see what happened here there's a chap wave inside track repellent zone i always draw this in and i talk about it it sounds like such a simple technique i don't know why people don't i don't see very much of it but look you take your upper uh, bars you can include the wicks Mostly I try to do the wicks, but if you have to use the bars themselves, that's fine. You draw a trend line to the most hit number of, of preferably two or more uh, points of contact. And then you draw a little mini, a tiny little mini channel. I call that the Chapman Wave inside track. In this case, the repellent zone, because every time prices get close, it gets pulled back. And if it's at the bottom, it would be a propellant zone. Or I call it a, a, a potential sell zone, because if it breaks above, that becomes a propellant and that'll then turn into a buy zone. So it's very important. And what's happened three times just in the last couple of weeks, we've gone right to the pink line and then reverse sharply. That's the first inside track uh, channel support. Uh, in this case, uh, support resistance going to the top, the green one, a break above the green is very positive. Close above the green, I should say. So we're making this real simple. The Dow's at 34,467, uh, down 28. If it's able later today to rally, try to get to today's high is 34,611. That's a lot of points. But if it's able to get into the, um, I'd even say 30, 34,505 area, about 50 points from here on the upside. Uh, that, I think, would be a good sign, but it's got to keep propelling to the upside. If it pulls back, it means that this whippiness stuck in this channel, or let me call it a rectangle formation. Gosh, I don't want to make it too messy here, but I'll do this. I'm going to show you that within this context, I'm even going to make it small. There's a rectangle, and that rectangle is saying that if there was a close into the 35,090 or higher area, then all of a sudden you're looking at the upside um, upside action perhaps continuing a little longer but basically right now we're just stuck in this channel uh, the resistance and the the support it's look at this when you think of a channel how long can a channel last a channel is certainly a sideways rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients look at the 23 to 234.53 all-time high uh, we missed the all-time high, a recent high of March of 2021 um, in the IWM, the Russell 2000. And look at the support in the 210, 208 area. And we've just been stuck there. This is March, the 19th, week of the 19th. So you've got April, so you've got March to April. So April, May, June, July, August, September. This is the seventh month of a trading range. Within the IWM, you could use it for uh, short-term trades and have fabulous percentage gains. But basically, if you're looking at the monthly chart, 95 back in March of 2020 to the 234.35 high, and then it's gone sideways. This is just nothing. It's just like an eye blink in the monthly. But in the weekly chart, that that's, looks quite wide. 
in the daily chart, it's huge. Look at these big trades you can have. So keep in mind, it's your time frame, how you consider your time frame, how you use your time frame. Let's get back to our, our work here. SPX at this particular point is down five, almost six at 43.55. Let me just show you something. I'll just use the E-mini, uh, the continuous contract for now. Look how big the moves are. This is intraday. Uh, overnight, that is, sorry, and uh, overnight, it went from a low of uh, three, uh, 40, 4317, and yesterday, at the high, it was in the 4400s. I mean, that's, that's big percentages on an intraday basis. And yet, when you think of it, think of a lowercase h that goes to another h. We're in the, in the format right now. I'm going to draw it in. And to be able to change this from making lower lows and lower highs, you're going to have to see the S&P have a spectacular rally, one that has a close, not just an intraday hit, but a close above the 44.22 level. And then I'll say, aha, finally there's enough strength to try to tackle the 44.60s. But until that happens, we're just stuck in a range. And the weekly chart is really suggesting that this is a peak G, not a G stash C, but a peak G, and it's in a cell mode. I've got it as a sell signal. I haven't actually notated it yet. Even though it's Tuesday today, I really have to wait until Friday. I didn't really have to wait for Friday. Look, this is one, two, three, three weeks up until yesterday, three weeks that it went under and closed uh, twice now underneath the 14 period moving average. Technically, I think I have to do it. All right, I'm doing it now because I've done my homework. And all I can say is that I've got at least for now, a sell signal, not a sell mode, but a sell signal at a peak G in the weekly chart of the S&P. And that suggests time and price. And we'll see what happens after this. MACD's weak stochastics at 55% terrible. On balance volume is a little weaker than it was, but it's still pretty good. Nine period moving average has got all week. It hasn't yet closed underneath the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart. But we've got a sell mode already in, in play for ages now in the uh, daily chart. And it's a leg B, probably a peak B this month in the E, in the E mini. And that's the S&P. Let's get back to our story. We want to look at the QQQ. And there it is. The QQQ is trading down uh, 53 cents at 357.90. <clears throat> now, this is a gray peak A, meaning just like the last one, it could fail. And I don't have any of the technicals to suggest it's even close to a buy signal, let alone a buy mode. So this is all saying MACD's weak stochastic is 41% weak in the daily. The nine period moving average is way on its pink, way underneath the 14. It hasn't even attempted to get to the 50 period moving average at about 365. This is this is not, I've said that the uh, NDX 100 is gonna, in, in a longer term, more an inter, a, a short to intermediate term consolidation uh, within the longer term major move to the upside. So that's how we're looking at it. And, the, and in this case, I have to call the weekly chart in a sell mode, sell signal, probably in a sell mode uh, with this Friday. But I, I, everything about it says it's acting very weak. And you can see because look at the SMHs. The SMHs are trying to rally earlier on. Now they're down 33 cents at 252.90. The semiconductor index has led markets up and markets down for, for decades, let alone years. So this is very important. It's saying this is a serious consolidation and the chip shortage. I know for a fact that in the in the automobile industry, some of those cars aren't going to come on. The 2021 cars are not even there. 2022 cars, they've sold 2021. 2022 cars are not in showrooms. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So I just wanted to finish the IWMS. I said it's been in the sideways channel for a long time between two, actually, you could say 234, but it's really between 230 and probably about 210, 212. And it's just stuck there. It's just got digesting huge gains. So that's the IWM, Russell 2000, small caps, 220 right now, up 49 cents. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Look, gold is trying its very best. To, to break into the 1790, 1800 area. It's tried a number of times, hits the 50 period moving average and then it pulls back. I don't use 50 very much other than to say that occasionally it'll be hit and it becomes important. In this case, it was important to pull back. But basically what I'm looking at is gold is holding, the, the, the I believe the way you have to look at it is that gold is holding very well within the context of the dollar's strength. And usually, they move in uh, opposite directions, not necessarily the same proportionality, but opposite directions. And now the dollar has gone to a leg F. I'm calling it an F now. I could call it an alternate count, but there's no need. Just call it an F. It's getting a little bit, a little bit uh, toppy, acting very well, but just on a short-term daily basis, a little bit toppy. Now, uh, hmm. because the 9 is so sharply above the 14 and the price is so sharply above the 9 and 14 period moving averages, and we're looking at uh, the MACD good stochastics, just okay at 83. It's good at 83 percent, but not as good as you'd expect going to new recovery highs. Actually, it's, a, it's almost a yearly high. Um, so in that context, and on balance volume, of course, we don't get yet because it, it's uh, the, the index itself. But you do get it on the UUP. Uh, oh, uh, UUP. I'm trading right here. UUP is the uh, the vehicle that we use. I'm going to call this for now. I'll call it an E. Don't, I could make it a change, but I don't see any reason why I need to make anything different. It did get. Now I have. I every. So this is a little technique that I'm going to show subscribers and the general public at the same time. Every once in a while, I get a peak D and I put a down arrow because the price pulls back pretty sharply and went under the 14 period in the weekly chart. And then on reflection, because the nine was still so strongly above the 14 period moving average, I have to get rid of that 
And then I have to put a, only a plus sign. I always put a plus above a D because at a peak D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen, as you saw right here, when it went from the 25 area right down to the uh, uh, 20, low 24s, and then started this big rally. In fact, there should have been an up arrow. I don't know where that disappeared to. So now what happens is I put in the next count, and you can see here it went to 25.35, 25.35, a double top, exactly the same price. I don't have to make this a phantom peak or anything. But here I'm going to go to an E. And what happens in a case like this, often enough to say, hey, keep this in mind, is that when it looked like the peak D down arrow gets changed to a plus, back to a plus sign because the MACD never went even close to crossing negative. Stochastic pullback, but held very nicely. On balance volume was good. And that nine period was just so superbly above the 14 period moving average. The very next leg up gets a continuation letter. But that's where I become a lot more cautious because that little nick to the downside in the in the MACD, that's where you often start to see deterioration in the shorter term daily chart that impacts the weekly chart. And I've often seen that E becomes a serious E and it pulls back pretty sharply. I don't know if that happens because the MAC, MACD and stochastic and on bounce volume in the day and the weekly chart are absolutely s superb. They are so strong. The weekly chart, monthly chart has gone to a leg B. It's improving dramatically. MACD's turned up. So the dollar is still an issue. And if I talk about that, I have to go to EUR, USD, which is the euro dollar currency pair. And the euro is pulling back. It's made the dreaded H, second dreaded H pattern. What is the dreaded H pattern? I'm going to be teaching all these techniques and discussing. I've got a whole list of stocks that we're going to be looking at, stocks that we were going, we're going to try to enter long. Uh, at some point over the next six to eight weeks or more because of what we're looking at for tw late 2021 into 2022. And um, those are the selections that we're going to be filtering out and see how we can get. I've already started uh, placing bids that we've got for some. We are, we've entered some that look like they're doing well. One is actually up um, uh, almost a percentage today. The other one is up um, Point thirty. So we have stocks that we've just started to buy, and they're actually working out quite nice. And one's working out very well, the other one's holding very has a fabulous move, and now it's just digesting it. And we brand a brand new one today. We just got in, and we'll see how that does. So um, that's what I'm going to do in my webinar coming up a week from today. But if you look at this, this is the dreaded H, and as I said before, that pattern is. One that looks like this, come down sharply, make an arch formation, fail at a peak A or a B, and you take out that left side look. Look, it took, the euro went to the 200 period moving average peak A, it failed in the doji height about 1.19, and then it goes arch formation failure, arch formation failure, arch formation failure, arch formation failure, and now there's another arch formation. When you get to four consecutive, three consecutive ones, the, th the fourth one is usually a much bigger one. In this case, it's just a complete failure. There's no strength at all, and you get into the Chapman Wave inside track support level in the weekly chart. This is going to be a very important period because if if the euro can't hold, if the euro can't hold 1.15 as support and closes under that, wow, that's going to help the dollar. And if you look at the USD JPY, which is of course, of course, I shouldn't say of course, some people don't know, it, is the US dollar Japanese yen. Look at the counterpoint. Look at the spectacular move that it's had, even greater than the dollar. Usually, the dollar and the yen go in the same direction, not the same percentage or anything like that, just the same direction. In this case, the, the yen is actually leading. Look at that week, a monthly chart, leg C, huge leg C, filled in the break that I called that rectangle formation. I actually took it out a little while ago because it was filling it in so nicely. But look at this, that rectangle formation this month, we might be closing well above 112, which is your key support in the monthly. We'll see. Monthly is young. It's only leg C in the um, daily chart. All right, I've got a whole bunch of questions. I'm trying to deal with them. So someone asked me about the currencies. I've just done the currencies. I've said the dollar's holding really well. We've been long the dollar since 2018, still long the dollar. So it's it's had a, a pretty whippy uh, move. We're, we're long from 90. It went all the way to 
uh, 100 and just just on 103 and then pull back very sharply still long we'll see if that's going to continue like that but if as long as the dollar is showing strength that's important i want to go to just back to gold for a moment you see this gold position um right here you see that cluster formation now what it has got the potential of is that there is a chapman wave oops stalk leg formation it goes leg body neck beak and once the beak is complete that can turn into a very big positive because there's usually a, a, a trend reversal that's very strong and that's exactly what we've got here so if the, if this particular wick if there is if the gold at any point it's at, at 1769 1770 if gold at any point intraday is able to hold above 17 point, 1771 on the continuous contract there's a real good chance it's going to work its way towards the 50 degree average of the high of uh, yesterday of a few days ago into the 1780 level let's just watch that i'll be back in a moment now are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ADC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're talking about a rectangle formation. Look at this, the E-mini one-minute chart. Uh, it's had just from 9.30 this morning, it's gone to the 43.65 level, down to the 43.40, the 43.39 Pops right back to the 43.59, bounces, fails, comes back to 43.40. Uh, 
and now it's straining right in the middle. So this is just a, this is a demonstration right here. The rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. Let's get back to our story here. And what we're looking at is gold is now at 1768. And as I said, if it can go for an hour and a half, so it's just touched it. But I would like to see it in the 1771 or higher area for about uh, 60. I prefer to say 90 minutes, and within that 90 minutes can slip under, can slip over, but 90 minutes, and, and that end of the 90 minutes, it must be higher than, say, 1771. Uh, I would say there's a good chance that it's going to attempt to try to get to the high that was made in the 1780 area uh, a couple of days ago, and if it suddenly fails and you're looking at 1759, it just says, uh-oh, <laughs> Rectangle formation stuck in the sideways move. Look at silver. Silver's trying to show a little bit of strength and it's on the uh, 9 and 14 period moving average is down just 0.02 at 22.64. What's really important about this, it has also gone to a peak B, but I don't yet have any buy signal in the, I will if it can go higher. But at this particular point, it's just, it's, it's, it's just trading in the sideways uh, consolidation phase. And you can see the same thing in the weekly chart. Look at high-grade copper. High-grade copper is just really suggesting somewhere, somehow, internationally, there is activity, there's business activity that's really improving. Because if you put it together with wood, the iShares Timber and Forestry ETF, nice comeback after four days um, of, a, of a low below the 200 period moving average at 86.18, up 34 cents. Um, this is just a, not a great sign. This is a better sign to say sideways move using the 200 period moving average as support in the daily and the weekly chart is trying to make a second cup formation. We'll see at 86. We need to see 87.50 by about Thursday or Friday to say this is good. If it just falls back into the 85 area, it says, ho oh, hum, nothing to see here. I think I've done everything. I just need to come back to the TLT. So the TLT is up $1.49 at 143.01. If you look at the tnx.x this is the 10 year making a lower high than yesterday i suspect maybe there's one more little pop to the upside but what's really important and then it could put, put pull back a little bit as bonds try to rally again most importantly if you're looking at the weekly chart a weekly close like this above the chapman wave inside track repellent zone now it's a propellant zone not only that you've got your chapman wave falling x just finish that up. Falling X one to one to the upside. I don't want to get carried away. I, I you know that I use these indicators and I can uh, trade on them. I can do a whole bunch of things. But most importantly, I try to use them initially, especially when I'm doing it publicly like this, as conservatively as possible because I see people sometimes pick up a technique and they start using it and put a lot of money to work with. In fact, they only know a partial, a part of the technique itself. So I don't want to take that responsibility. I'm just saying these are techniques that I like to use. They work often enough that I can talk about them in a very positive way. But now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say, if there is a one-to-one -one breakout, which is the technique of the Chapway falling axe formation, one of the things I'll talk about in my webinar coming up a week from Tuesday for subscribers at four o'clock till 5.30, and it is archived, so you can, if you can't make it, you can just come in anytime and listen to it over and over and over. Look, this says we've almost got there to the one to one, the conservative one to one. If, in fact, the yield, the 10 year yield, starts to push into the 16.63, 1.663 area percent, then I'm immediately going to say, okay, I can go to the next thing. I usually just grab a moving average and I use that as support. And that'll take you to the 17s, 17.10, say, 1.71. But I don't like to do that until I've got confirmation. So this is just the start to say, this is a breakout. This is the one-to-one the -one pattern. Uh, it's already gone extended straight away. It hasn't gone sideways to be able to get the same diagonal a degree of movement or the number of bars. So I'm just saying I'm putting this in. In fact, I'm going to make it as uh, transparent as possible, 80%, just to say it's there. And it's saying that if yields start to move, we're going to be watching very closely. What? The XLF, because that's the financials. Yes, they use brokerage and all, all other things because it's the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund because it has everything in the financial area, even Berkshire Hathaway. 
So um, yields are important to many stocks. So I'm going to get to some of the questions right now while I look at them. Yes, so this is a, a deep pullback. I, could this be an alternate count? D right there back in all, late August, early September, and it pulls back very sharp to 36, and it's still holding above the low that was made in the 34s from way back in uh, Ju July from the start of the buy mode. So this could be a brand new buy mode. It is. It, this should go to somehow or other, it should go to leg D. doesn't have to, but it should somehow try. And that says that the yields are still going to be stuck in a range a little longer before they actually start a much bigger move in the opposite direction. In other words, going down rather than going up. And that just says that the XLF um, 30, uh, 30, 39 39.41 would be your upside side target to get to a leg D. doesn't give you time, but it should happen within a week, and it should get to a leg D. And the, and the weekly chart is peak A, peak B, and this is, I'm calling it a C rather than a G slash C for now. Uh, so this is all the, the, you see how dependent so many of the areas in the market are. One depends on the other or is influenced by the other. And this is the whole thing with the yields. So what I am saying is that looking at longer term, I think longer term, the yields, uh, that bonds are going to go higher. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, bonds are going to go lower, yields are going to go higher. But in the short term period, we have to see whether the TLT is able by Friday or Monday of next week to trade in the 144.60 or higher area or go underneath 139. And that's going to be really key to what we look at in, our, in, in November for trading parameters in the market itself. So I think we've covered a chunk of those things. Did that, did that. A uh, question of a statement in the den some, uh, in uh, Lithium, I think I saw something there to do with lithium. Let's just go to lit. Lithium is lit is the um, there it is global X lithium battery technology. Uh, this is an ETF, and it's trading down 32 cents at 80.44. I'm watching this closely. This is going to be part of my uh, discuss my webinar coming up a week from today. I think this is a really important area. Uh, 87.20 was the high of 13th of August. Uh, Doji Peak F. Uh, 87.10 was the high of. So just we've seen these double tops. It's amazing how they either just may fractionally go under or fractionally go above, and then we get a, a, a decline. That's exactly what happened. Was Peak D in the daily chart in the 87 area. And look at this, it comes all the way down to the 78, 79 area, trading at 80.45. I think this is a consolidation phase. Might have to have a little bit more of a dip. This is the lithium, LIT is a symbol, 80.41 down 38 cents. Pounds of Chapman Dow is unchanged, SP is down four. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Dow's up 33 SPs uh, unchanged. Uh, trying to rally, I think there's going to be a bit of a rally. I think that just uh, within that context, just up and down and up and down, and that's the way you have to think of trading. FXI is the uh, iShares. Uh, this is the uh, large cap China ETF uh, down a little bit, down a penny at 39.91. I think it's trying to rally here. I suspect that at 41, 41.30 is going to be the big resistance to break on the upside. And certainly it also has to hold the 3820 support no i didn't mean that i mean 3920 to 3870 support we'll see what happens there okay a couple of questions have come in let me get to them so um uh could i show facebook yes 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 facebook making a new low today down seven at 318.25 this is what i mean peak this is a peak d at 384.33 on the 3rd of september 384 down to 318. I would say that the 70 point is a 20% a decline. Weekly chart peak E. Monthly chart is probably going to be a peak E. I think that this is telling us a story. Amazon, same thing. Amazon is trading down. Oh, it's, uh, now it's up 90 cents. Woohoo. 3247. It's in the lower range. It's just kind of stuck. I don't think it's going anywhere just yet. It needs a little more time. Apple, same thing. Apple. Uh, just same dreaded H pattern keeps doing it over and over. It's down a dollar at 141.75 as part of the, the Dow, actually. Um, so when I'm looking at this, I'm saying the XLK is going to struggle. It is down. This is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund down 35 cents at 150.77. Uh, struggling. Peak D, this is a sell mode in the weekly chart. I, all I can say is that we're looking at the rotation, and I'll, I'll explain what I'm looking at here. Uh, in the uh, just a couple of questions, I, I'll try to get. To, I've got those. I've got those. I've got those. Um, yes, I did the FXI. Uh, a question on Merck. Uh, Merck, I haven't looked at for a little while. Merck's pulling back. Is starting to fill the gap after the big news-related big spike to the upside. They've got that. Um, medication that you can take no shot you just take a pill uh if it gets past that'll be good but i think it's all kind of put into the stock so just watch closely at 79.85 down nine cents i suspect that it's just stuck in this range for a while i'd, I'd say 81 to 82 is resistance and it must hold 75 if it breaks 75 it means it's done for now but actually i don't i think it's just in a sideways trading range until we start to see the actual financial results of what's going to happen and then maybe it breaks out and goes to the 88.31 all-time high of December of 2020. Uh, we'll be watching that. Another question came here, IYT, absolutely. IYT is the, uh, the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Industrial Fund. <laughs> I can never say the name without chuckling such a long name. It's just doing nothing right now. It's held quite well, but it's not breaking. I mean, 287 was the all-time high back in May. 
and and it, it, down, it slumps down to the 240s. 40, that's about 17% decline. Uh, at the time that the Dow was making new highs, now they're both consolidating. No, it's just telling us that things are going on that, that you've got to take seriously right now. Uh, then, uh, so this is going to be interesting. So in sequence, uh, GDX came as another question. I was doing this just now. GDX is holding well. It's a 31.08, it's I should say, subscribers. We are long. We have a long position. Uh, and I'm treating this only as a trade at this particular point. I'm watching closely to see what happens. Um, it's just a generic thing for us rather than specific stocks. And what it is, uh, I would say that as a as it stands right now, there is a potential cup formation that's going to attempt to get to the 3150s. That's where the evidence comes in because the nine period moving average in the weekly chart is at 3112. We're testing it right now, 3112 exactly. And the 14 period is at 3190. And you want to see it try to get to the 3150s and use that as a springboard to close, not just break above, but a close in the weekly chart only because it's used up so much time and in a way, it is in play. But that Bitcoin, look at this Bitcoin. I mean, this is, so it pulls back to that big deal down 850 at 57,130. I, I suspect this is a peak B. We still remain a very small position, remain long. We had fantastic gains. I, I just wanted to keep it. I did miss it. It was my fault. I did the analysis. I just didn't take the plunge when you had that big move up back in the beginning of October. I should have just said, close your eyes. Get in this, but we have the overnight, the GBTC, which is the fun, which means it doesn't trade overnight. And you kind of stuck. If you make a mistake, you can take a clobber. You can get really hit the next day. I like what I see. So for subscribers, we, we might just add a trading position if, if I see the conditions are right. And I do believe that that ugly candle of in GBTC, this is actually in the Bitcoin Investment Trust of the week of the 14th of May. 47, uh, 48 round, no, no, 48.08 in the high and 34.90 low. I think we're trying to fill most of that and we'll see what happens. I do, I am calling it a leg E in the weekly chart. We'll see. Meantime, it's holding really well. It's in play as, as something very different to what the gold position is right now. So um, that's, the, I did that. Okay, now here, yeah, this is a good statement. No, I don't see the caller. Oh, we have Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Good, Basil. How are you? I'm well. You would like to look at? Well, there's a couple little Alzheimer's. Well, one's bigger and one's smaller. Alzheimer's uh, drug stocks. One's ALZN, and the other one we've talked about before, Sava. And they both yes. have, uh, well, they're not similar chart patterns. ALZN just gone straight down, and then it had one big candle on some FDA news. And it's kind of retracing on light volume. I wonder what you think about that. And then if you have time to look at Sava, that would be great. And Sava was the other one. That is Cassava. Cassava. What did I see the other day? SAV, which was, had a lot of talk about Cassava, but was actually a place. Cassava. All right. Control R. There it is. Okay. So this is what I'm thinking. These are strictly for me, then news related. And when you get a consolidation and it really is not going back to the previous low in, in cassava's case it ran up to 68 in P, at peak a and then it just kept coming down day after day lower highs low lows but it's holding beautifully above the 39.01 low of the third, uh, 15th of september at 51.30 but i like to treat this either as a measured move that you can do when you are looking at the price or there's a news related thing and we have a couple of people in there and one in particular who does a lot of work looking at when news related, you know, how they are for each level of FDA approval, etc. So I'm just going to say to you that in the sequence that I look at with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 sessions of lower lows, that's, I'm not going to say it's a record, but the last one is 113.27 with a 92 round number open on the 9th of, of July. And it, it gets real, it just gets dumped to the 69 level. I mean, that is a 113 to 69. And that took one, two, three, four, five, six, six sessions. This is one of the longest digestive phases, phases has had without taking out a left side low. It did it before. 
but that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, about eighteen sessions. But I went to a new low. So I, you know what? Give me a moment because I want to put the two together plus one or two others that I'll be looking at, and then I want to talk about it in time sequence, not in new sequence, which I don't know. Can you hold on? Sure. Okay, we'll be back with Mark in a moment, and then we're also going to be looking at some of the uh, aerospace stuff. And- Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, okay, folks. We're on with Mark. So, so Mark, I'm going to just say to you, in the den, uh, Boz Dan, who, who, who does a lot of work in this particular area, does a lot of work in other areas as well, but particularly in biotech, says that DPW, uh, if Mark wants ALZN exposure, buying DPW might be a better way to have an EV uh, a segment among a few other penny stock positions. Um, all I'm going to say to you is that wasn't your question. Your question was, about both SAVA, which is Cassava Sciences. I'm going to suggest that within another two days, today's Tuesday, by Thursday or Friday, if SAVA, Sava actually can pop above, it's at 51.21. If it can get to 53.20, there's a good chance it's going to go quickly to the 55, maybe even 57 area. Then I think it pulls back. If it takes out yesterday's low of 47.77, if it closes under that, I wouldn't touch it. In, in both cases, I would just say I would personally hold off. I don't want to risk money. With you, you're already playing the odds. And the other one that you were looking at, ALZN, 
All I can say is I, this is not what I want to even at $2.44. It's just too risky. I don't see anything. And if you see a big spike, you can intraday. You can just jump on it and rally with it and take your money and go home. And that's the only way I would do this. So I would leave it for a day or two. And I hope that helps you. Yeah, it does. I've already uh, I've played Sava twice for decent profits, and I just kind of look into it. Oh, okay, so, so keep in mind, that's the way you want to do it. You, you, yeah. you have a good handle on that. So hold off for now, but watch it closely and see those positions. See that What there. was that other hope symbol that, that the, um, you told me about? GPW or DPW? DPW, yes. Was it? Yeah, I, and it's a DPW, and it's just okay. it's a, like a penny stock. It's also a 228. So that's okay. it. Uh, so just thank you for thank you for calling. So folks, thank you're going to have Larry Pesavento. You've got great programming coming up. I'll be back with Tom later on. And I just wanted to mention in the den was a, a whole bunch of the aerospace area uh, was discussed, and that's interesting because we have one of those GE, which is different dynamics. It's trading up pretty sharp. It's done very well since we got it.